he comes, here he comes, then the trumpets bang the drums, here he comes, up along Cassidy, here he comes. The harmless old wooden wagon setting idle in Sandy Morgan's livery stable looked harmless anyhow, yet no one within 50 miles of Twin Rivers would have anything to do with it. Sandy couldn't even give it away. Folks called it the Jinx Wagon, and for good reason. It had brought nothing but trouble and heartaches to anyone who had ever owned, ridden, or come in contact with it. The last owner had been killed trying to outrun a pack of renegades. Right after that, Sandy Morgan took over the wagon, but he knew better than to put it in operation. He just let it gather dust, using it more for storage than anything else. So the Jinx Wagon just sat there, out of trouble. Until the night not long ago when the Twin Rivers Bank was robbed. The bank wasn't far from the livery stable, so it didn't take Sandy any time at all to realize what was happening. What he didn't realize was that the excitement in Twin Rivers that night was going to start a chain of events that would alter quite a few lives and put the Jinx Wagon back in business. Those saddle ponies, mister, shake them loose. Get them out back and make it fast. Give them a hand, but keep a gun on them. How's it look? It's fixing every building, boss. Hurry it up. Somehow it just don't seem right, boss. Quit worrying. Without this satchel full of bank money, we can just be three cow folks riding out of town. They'll stop us and search us, but they'll let us go. Yeah, but with all this money, I still think we should... You ain't paid the bank. We'll come back and pick it up when the heat's off, just like we planned. What if someone comes snooping around or moves the wagon? The Jinx wagon? Yeah, nobody will touch it. This money's safe like in a, a church. That's why I planned it this way. It'd take a hurricane to move this old wreck. Let's get out of here. hurricane, nobody in Twin Rivers knew about it. But the morning after the robbery, contrary to the masked bandit's reasoning, the Jinx wagon found a new owner. Dan Clemens, an elderly southerner, was on the last leg of his long journey westward from Georgia. He traveled by stage as far as Twin Rivers, but the last few miles of his trip were off the stage route, so he needed transportation. Sandy told him the story behind the Jinx wagon, but Dan Clemens was not one for superstition. To him, a wagon was a wagon, so he went right ahead and bought it. Sandy dusted a few cobwebs off, outfitted it with harnessing and horses, and the Jinx wagon was ready to roll. So Dan Clemens, the proud owner of a wobbly old wagon that up to now had spelled nothing but trouble, rode out of town with a big smile on his face. Me and my saddle pal, Red Connors, didn't feel much like smiling, though, when we heard about the robbery and were asked to try and track down the thieves. We both had a little savings in the bank ourselves. After we got all the information we'd need from the bank officials, we figured maybe Sandy Morgan could give us some answers. Sandy went on to tell Red and me all about Dan Clemens and his story about coming out from Georgia. Sandy said he wouldn't even have mentioned it, but for the big roll of bills the old man was carrying. It wasn't much to go on, but Red and I figured maybe the wagon was part of the plan too. And if it was, the old gent might lead us right to the rest of the gang. For the next few hours, Red and I put a lot of miles behind us as we tracked the troublesome wagon.
Wobbly wheels made the wagon tracks easy to read, and following had been no trouble at all. Yet just a ways up the road, Dan Clemens wasn't finding the going as easy. The Jinx wagon was living up to its name. If it wasn't for you, you can't have this old wheel. I might have been to the outpost a long while back. Come up there, come up, come up! Dead damn my cats! I'll never see such a no account collie old wagon. <laughs> You've been nothing but trouble to me ever since I met you. Uh, yeah, you just all break. That's the fifth time you've done that to me. I'm gonna thump you a good one. Dead down it, old wagon. I'm gonna kick the living deal out of you, wagon. Oh, 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 oh. Now, you got me in a frenzy wagon. I ain't gonna truckle with you no more, wagon. I should have believed that livery stable fella when he told me you was nothing but trouble. Now, just as soon as I get these horses. Oh! Hi there. Uh, howdy, howdy. You own this wagon? What, that cockly old piece of trouble? <laughs> I just disowned it. What is all the shooting about? Yeah. That wagon and me, we don't see eye to eye. I'm going one way and it's going t'other. It's got a hex on it. You figured on leaving it right here in the road? Yeah, I hope to tell you I am. <laughs> I never want to see the darn thing again. Say, I paid real good money for that wagon. Seems to me I can do as I see fit. I'm a U.S. Marshal, old timer. My name's Hopalong Cassidy. This is Red Connors. Well, pleased to meet up with you. <laughs> I'm Dan Clements. From Georgia, huh? Well, yeah. Hey, there's been a bank robbery. You mind if we ask you a few questions? <laughs> Pump them at me, son. I got nothing to hide. This good money you were talking about, is that in currency? It sure is. You mind if I look at the serial numbers? Oh, not at all, son. Not at all. <laughs> Here it is. This is my life savings. And I work mighty hard for it, too. <laughs> that stable man was a line, boss. That's the wagon well enough. No mistake in it. No mistake in Hopalong Cassidy, either. Well, this is not the stolen money, Red, and there isn't enough of it. Well, I tote fair with everybody, Marshal Cassidy. I ain't one for singing snake songs. <laughs> snake songs? What kind of talk's that? Uh, where I come from, down Georgia, we talk plain. Snake songs are slippery stories. You know, tall tales, lies. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Yeah, I guess so, if you're well acquainted with snakes. Yeah, <laughs> now, if you gents will kindly excuse me, I'll be getting along. I ain't seen my children for quite a spell. Going to visit your family, huh? Yes, I sure am. My son and daughter. <laughs> They're on a store here near a little town up ahead. Can't be too much further. Seems to me you're leaving a good piece of equipment here in the road. Well, son, if you feel that way about it, you're welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, would you kindly hand me my rifle, Mr. Conant? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I better help you there, old timer. Looks like you got a bad foot. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Trying to kick some sense into that consounded old wagon there. <laughs> yeah. Give me a foot here. Uh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much obliged. Much obliged, Marshal. I must be getting old again. <laughs> You're doing all right. Well, so long, gents. Come on. Come up. Come up, there. Come up. Old Dan was such a sorry sight moving down the road that Red and I figured when he cooled off later on, he might find use for the wagon. 
So knowing that the store Dan had mentioned was just a few miles up the road, we patched up the jinx wagon and started pulling it. You and your great ideas. Come on, let's take the wagon away from him. Trying to take it away from Hopalong Cassidy don't exactly strike me as a bright idea. Well, what do you suggest? Just sit in here watching all that cash roll away? Don't talk stupid. We'll follow him, find out what he does with the wagon. Can't plan to take it far. Too bad the old man didn't keep it. He'd have been a pushover. Ginny! Jeff, you all around? Pa! Oh, we thought you'd never get here. Yeah, it seemed like I felt the same way, Julie, darling, but I made it all right. Is anything wrong? No, I'm just tuckered, Saul. It's good to see you, Pa. Here, let me give you a hand. Yeah, thank you, boy. <laughs> well, I guess that's about all there is to it, children. That cogly old wagon just cumped me on the ankle and drove me into a conniption fit. So I left it right there in the middle of the road. Well, I can't say as I blame you, Pa. I don't know, Jenny. Well, I can understand how Pa feels about it. But that wagon would have sure come in handy here at the store. Yeah, come in handy like a stick of dynamite, maybe. Why, if I brought that cogly old thing here, the roof would probably fall right in on the store. Oh, Pa. <laughs> uh, well, now that we're all one big happy family together again, I want that you should keep this for me. It ain't much, but I thought it might come in handy. Most $3,000 in that. And, Jeff, uh, uh, would you fetch this someplace where it's nice and snug? I'll put it in the safe, Pa. See, it's a lucky thing that jinx wagon didn't run away with your money, too, eh, Pa? Yeah. Say, sounds like you've got yourself a customer. Oh, it's just a couple of cowboys drawing a wagon. What kind of wagon? It's just an old wobbly one. Well, turn my cats. That's it. Them cowboys are bringing that wagon here. Hey, take it easy, Paul. Your foot. Hurt my foot. I tell you, in for a heap of trouble you keep that Come thing, on, yeah? yeah. 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 Oh, Jenny. Well, you must be the Clemens. Yes. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is Fred Connors. Howdy. Paul's told us all about you fellas. I told you I didn't want that no count wagon marshal. <laughs> well, I thought maybe he'd change his mind. You know, with a little bit of work, that wagon could be fixed up as good as new. Oh, he's just upset. He'll get over it. <laughs> Won't you come in? Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. Just a minute. We still have work to do, or have you forgotten? Oh, well, shucks, no, Hoppy. It ain't me that's weary. I was just thinking of the horses. Oh, the horses, huh? All right, maybe they should have a little rest. Well, hi, Dan. Uh, Marshal. How's the foot? Uh, fair to middle, isn't it? Uh, until you brought that spooky wagon here, and now it hurts like blitz. <laughs> you and that wagon. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty swollen. If you don't know to retain nothing, it ain't nothing at all, Marshal. Well, that's enough to make a cripple out of you if we don't do something for it. I better get you to a doctor. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Ah, uh, we'll put you right in the wagon and everything. Uh, Marshal, not in that dun wagon again, please, now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then we'll put you on Red's horse. Oh, Come on, that's yeah. just as bad. Come on. Here we go. Uh, I finally got him on Red's horse, and we were on our way to the doctor. Get your saddles, boys. This won't take long. Wrong, boss. It's gone. Money's gone. What's going on out here? That's what we want to know, mister. We're going to find out starting right now. 
Get inside. All of you. Come on, Jess. Blake, take care of the horses. Back to the doctors, everything outside the store looked nice and peaceful. I noticed the horses in front, but just figured the store had some customers. Yes, yeah, some customers. When Dan and I walked inside, we were really in for a surprise. Hello, Marshal. Join the party. I told you the roof would fall in if you brought that contraption here. It looked like the roof had fallen in, all right. And while one of the gunnies tied me up, Red was talking a mile a minute, telling me all about the jinx wagon and the money the bank thieves had hidden. Red said they were furious when the money turned up missing and thought sure Dan had found it and stashed it somewhere in the store. When they blew the safe open and found Dan's life savings of $3,000, they were certain it was part of the bank money. So they tore up the store looking for the rest. When they didn't find it, they figured Dan must have the rest of the money on him. So they just settled down to wait for his return. You're pretty foxy, huh? No talking. Let's see if you got any of that cash on you. Listen, old man, I'm tired of talking. Now, where's the rest of that money? And I'm tired of staying in, sonny. I tell you, I don't know nothing about your hard-earned money. Where is it? <laughs> You're a fearsome cuss, ain't you? <laughs> Go ahead, chunk me, I still don't know. You'd better know or I'm gonna kill you. I knew I'd have to think of something fast or he'd carry out his threat. I couldn't endanger everyone else by trying to break loose. But if I could get the thieves out on a wild goose chase. Then I remembered something. Something Dan had set out on the road. Sure, Dan, you might as well tell him. Huh? Cassidy's just getting smart, mister. You better listen to him. Sure, Dan. Sing him a snake song. About where you uh, buried the money out on the trail. Yeah, yeah snake song. Yeah, yeah huh? I suppose it might as well. Well, that's more like it. Yeah. <coughs> Where is it? Dan came through like a charter member of the Liars Club. He told a snake song that was a dandy. He really got himself wrapped up telling how he'd found the money, kept part of it, and buried the rest out on the trail. Told the outlaws it was all theirs. He'd tell them right where he hid it. But the leader said Dan would go along and show them where, and threatened to kill him if any of us trailed them. Then he sent one of his men out to hitch up the team horses to the wagon so they could carry Dan. When Dan heard he was going to ride in the jinx wagon, I thought for a moment he'd rather be killed. Listen a minute, Mitchell. But by the time the team horses were hitched, Dan had resigned himself to the wagon as the lesser of the two evils. As soon as we heard them leave, I got to work on my ropes. Red and I had to get ourselves free, knowing that every second wasted could be the last in Dan Clemens' life. I finally got free and released the others. Then Red and I raced out on the trail of the wagon. Knowing Dan couldn't stall forever, we raced against the time the bank thieves would realize Dan didn't have the slightest idea where the money was. What? Yeah, it was right around here somewhere. Uh, let's see. The, I seem to disremember exactly where I buried that darn money. I, was it uh, that tree over there? Or was it that one? Maybe this will help you remember. Now quit stalling. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. No, no, it was, uh, it was that tree over there. <laughs> you better be sure. Late, start digging. We spawned the wagon up ahead. I motioned Red to follow me, and we circled quietly toward a small hill behind the outlaws. From the looks of the digging going on, we knew Dan was still singing his snake song.
Dodge, a treasure hunt's over. Wait a minute, would you mind get them? Take care of these two. Sweet life. I'm mighty glad you made it, though, son. I was pretty near running out of the snake songs. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did fine. So yeah. the old jinx wagon. Yeah, that old brake slipped shut just as pretty as you please. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you just trundle that piece of no account into the wagon. I think maybe I can drive it back as far as the store, anyhow. Good. <laughs> we'll go back and pick up the other two and get them on their way to jail. Yeah. <laughs> We got Dan Clemens settled with his kids at the store and then headed back to Twin Rivers. Brent was kind of wary, but the jinx wagon behaved as if it knew that the outlaw's occupants and back had more than enough of its demon influence. I sent Red to get Sandy Morgan. I told him to tell the livery stable owner that we needed him to identify the bank robbers. The sheriff was pleased enough to jail the bandit gang, but more concerned about the whereabouts of the stolen money. His confusion was understandable, just as it had been to all of us. Because all the time we'd been on the trail, the money had never left Twin Rivers. A lot of the things had come clear to me when I was tied up back in the store. I realized that the bank money had entered the livery stable, but had never come out. There was only one person who could have taken it. Sandy Morgan, the wistful little stable owner. Red had caught him just as he was boarding the stage out of town. Actually, Sandy had put us on a trail that led only one place, right back to him. Where's the money? Well, you won't find anything in there, Marshal. I'm telling you, just my clothes in there, that's all. That's all. Well, this is the money, all right, Sheriff. The serial number's checked. You want to tell us about it, Sandy? Well, when they rode off that night, I noticed they didn't have that leather satchel with them they came in with. And when I saw the straws and the cobwebs disturbed on the jinx wagon, well, it didn't take me long to find out the hiding place. All right, Sheriff, he's all yours. So Sandy Morgan, who thought he'd outwitted everyone, also fell victim to the curse of the jinx wagon. So long, Sheriff. Don't overfeed him. Better get this wagon back to Dan, Hoppy. We're not taking it back. What? Dan said when we got back to Twin Rivers, he wanted me to give the wagon to you. He said he knowed you'd be mighty proud to own her. Well, dog my cat, Marsha Cassidy. If that ain't the daggone snake story I ever heard. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, little friends. This is just a thought about guns. I was doing a scene one time in one of the pictures, and the boy that was working with me was twirling his gun on his hand and playing with it. I said, what are you doing with that gun, Lucky? He said, I was just playing with it. I said, those things are not to play with. They kill people. So watch your guns, children. Be careful with them, won't you? There he goes, on his way. Down the moonlit trail to where cowboys ran. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop 
Babylon Cassidy, he'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then.